It's be take two. I'm here at uh, Wonderfest. It's June 1st. Wonderfest 2024. Um, it's 2.05 in the afternoon. So this is like the third show that they've done since the pandemic hit. And I guess the, cr the crowds are there, but it's not quite as crowded, it looks like, as it was last year. So pan around. We're in the lobby, not the lobby, the hallway. So let me head over towards Dealers Hall A, sorry, Dealers Hall B, which is the smaller of the vending rooms. Oh, okay. So this is this will be my second take. I actually got like in the room for like a couple minutes, five minutes, and my battery ran out. So let's go inside the room and see what we can see. So again, this is a smaller of the vendor rooms, dealer rooms. And you have people selling stuff, kits, um, but not as much as the larger vendor room. You also have like professional people, famous people, artists, writers who are camped up in here. You know, you can get autographs from them. It's kind of cool, it's like more low key. I'm trying this again, my battery ran out. So I'll probably get all the way at the end and it'll run out again. I have to take three. <laughs> So I actually, I think this vendor guy, the other guy is new. A lot of vintage kits. I actually purchased a couple Ed Roth funny cars from him early on. Really reasonable prices. I kind of mentioned something to one. I'm here with two friends of mine, Ray and Max, AKA Andrew. But I mentioned some of the, vi some of the vendors, um, they kind of charge a little bit. Well, they, they, they're charging you collectible prices for some of these things. This dealer, vendor guy, was his prices were very reasonable. There's some built-ups, old Auroras. Oh, you can get in the picture. I'm video. I'm dig it, doing a take. What is your name? Justin. Justin. So Justin is the guy who was nice enough. He sold me a couple of Ed Roth fig, uh, funny cars. <laughs> so I was just telling him very reasonable prices. Awesome. Appreciate it. So this was, I'm not sure who did it, but somebody decided to come up with uh, Major Matt Mason. Displays, vintage 60s toys. And if they told me, I would have brought some of my own in. Over here, a couple of my friends. You guys want to stay out of the videotape or you don't mind getting in it? Okay. We got James and we have Randy from the Chicago area. A couple regulars here. Did you guys bring anything for this? No? I knew I could bring my own toys in. Yeah, I, I, I would have brought some of mine in also. Yeah. I wish I had known about the whole thing they were doing that show. Yep. <laughs> so I actually had these as, as kids, as a kid. And this was, it was an interesting design. It was actually a wire armature, and they had the rubber outside, which became the figure. And the problem with wire, as you guys know, if you bend wire back and forth enough times, eventually it stresses out the, um, the metal and it breaks it. So you have a bunch of situations in which figures were broken, but the arms or feet or knees or whatever. So this is Major Matt Mason. Let's go over here. This is a phenomenal guy. Did a um, might have been able to show it. It's basically the shuttle. I have to come back. It's too full. This is another vendor dude. A lot of vintage collectible toys, kits. We 
me see if I can get an angle here of you know, this is scratch built. I think he said it was 124th scale. There are too many people around here. I'll come back. This is a gentleman out of the UK. So I was talking to him, he had like some 3D printed figures for like Battlestar Galactica and other things. Man, he is full of them. Is there one of the uh, the famous people? William Stout? I think he's an author. And he's doing signatures. Really nice artwork. Yeah, I know. Did, didn't you want to live in a future where... A couple one-on-one -on -one scale props. It looks like from the Rocketeer. That's how we're supposed to do it. Yeah. Got t-shirts. Sorry, man. See, you got me going on. No, I do. I do the exact same thing. Back to the Future. One of my friends was looking for a Back to the Future t-shirt. Max. Okay, Andrew. Excuse me. Get some more shirts. Oh. New Mutants, Attack on Titan, Gundam, well, I might have to get one of these most of Gundam that was original, Deadpool, Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, like Avengers. More t-shirts. Looks like it's the same vendor, the same guy. More t-shirts. These are more horror. Halloween, Frankenstein. I think this is a smooth on people. Nick Tate. He has evolved. Oh yeah, he was Space 1999. You stopped here. Maybe they fell down on the floor. Oops. Excuse me. It's a massive eagle display. I think this was here last year. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it looks like it might be 121st scale, the big massive one in the back. Right of your figures. How you doing? Excuse me. I appreciate it. Thank you. No worries. I love the different sizes and scales. Looks like either 3D print or resin version. I actually broke down. I purchased a um, purchased the 172nd scale version of that. So I'm going to get the, the aluminum thrusters from a guy named Mark, Mike who's out of um, Canada. Excuse me. <laughs> Nautilus, 20,000 leagues under the sea. A couple props from the show. Cool. This is a nice picture.
Looking space 1999-ish. Although I might be wrong, it actually looks like a different helmet from maybe um, Space Odyssey 2001. It was another vintage vendor. As you can tell, he deals with ooh, the paddy wagon. That's one, one of the ones I'm looking for. I think I have that there. Uh, a lot of vintage collect collectible toys. I see Captain Action. I think I had that as a kid. Although that looks like the statue. Comic books. Look at some cool stuff, space stuff. Madman shipyards. Excuse me. Nice serenity. Oh, I'm sorry about that. It's by dealing with customized jewelry. Which kind of looks cool. Converted A Wing. How you doing? I'm just documenting this. <laughs> it's a lazy, lazy person's version of uh, not having to take pictures. How you doing? Good, how are you? How's it going? Good. Let's we'll shake your hand with the lift. <laughs> Hot sauce? Hot sauce. Okay. Big fun. Cool. Cool posters. You have uh, paintings. Whoa. These are nice. Thank you. Ghoulish. I like the pumpkin. Just about all the original pieces go under a black light too. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. And Poe. Edgar Allan Poe. Cool, and these are it's like posters. I like this. Crap. So this is what I was actually been skirting around. This is in the center of the room. This is like a vintage Macross Mecca uh, showing. I know a guy, the guy actually, I know a guy who knows a guy. Um, this big, humongous thing, green and tan thing in the back is from Robotech slash Macross. It's called a Destroid Monster. It's a 170 second scale. They actually had, when it was popular back in the 80s, 90s, they actually had a kit, but the. Um, the robots in front, they're called Valkyries. This is a Glog. It's in, it's in, Glog was the, the Zentradi, the guys in the back to the front were these uh, Robotex. But anyway, what happens was they released this kit, but they never released the 172nd scale kit because it was so humongous. And uh, he ended up, um, Mike Salzo again, he ended up um, producing uh, the 172nd scale version. I picked it up from him a number of years ago, Jersey Fest. I kind of don't want to think how many years, I think it's over 10 years. But um, I always thought it was like cool when you display, when you display the monster, the destroyed monster with other um, Robotechs, you can see like the, the size comparison. This is a large Centrati. Probably see the studio scale. scale. So I think this is scape, Scapegoat. These are similar, like, anime stuff. True world, it's getting dark. Not sure why. Here we go. Camera's acting up. 
So I think Mike, a guy named Mike, Matt Merzak did this one a number of years ago. It did really well in the contest. We have a huge Optimus Prime. I do mean huge. That's right, about three feet in length, uh, three feet tall. I like the metallic finish. Uh, another guy I know, see I'm dropping names here, uh, Anthony Goodman, he did these, he did these two last year, he did this one. I love how he lit it up, you can see how it's like pulsing, he used like cotton and transparent colors and he also put electronics. Um, I think he did this one too, Via for Lightning, which I kind of like. This was the one he did this year. These are miniatures that um, another guy I know, Terry. It's Terry Meisel. Yeah, Terry Meisel. A lot of these are for from um, from role playing games. This one, a different guy I know. Because I know people who did all of these. This is actually my roommate. This is Jay Claddock. Get down so you can see it a little bit up closer and personal. Here goes his miniature. There's quite a few pieces he has here. And I love this autofocus feature. Well, I guess. Yeah, there it goes. It's working a little bit. Um, I think either Anthony or Jay did this piece in the back. Come on, you can focus. There we go. These are old Robotech. I forget the actual name, but these are like imported from Japan. And that's like a power suit, female centrality power suit. Uh, this is the underside of it going vertical. Let's move over. Oh, this is nice. I love it when you drop a mech into like a diorama or a vignette or scene, like you're telling a story. Like this is the GM. GM was the Federation. These are um, not Robotech. These are um, kind of. That's a head from a Zaku. Zaku were the Zixion people, the bad guys. Have a couple vehicles. The Pat Labar, which is another anime, which is imported over here from Japan. Shogun Warrior, amazing. This is 1980s. And you have the Gundams, of course. This is RX-78, which is the original Gundam. This is like a battle damage one. Kind of scuffed up and marred up and battle damage. This is, I think, from Battletech. Let me shift over. This is like a book. I think it was also a game system as well. There we go. Aura, Battler, Dunbine, Dun 1983. Gigantor. This is new Gigantor. I remember old Gigantor from the 1960s. This was another. These kids, some of these kits were actually produced by Ravel in the 1980s, and they were taken from different animes, and they were loosely packaged called like Robotech. So this was one of them as well. Cool Walker. You have another Gundam in the back, another RX-78. This one's a little bit more clean, not a lot more clean. You have Machine Krieger. So this is, I guess, showing the history of the Japan model imports in the 70s and 80s. So over here, this is something else. This is a different contest, not really related to that other stuff. Make the Galileo your, your own. So you have different versions of the Galileo. It's kind of cute. You have the Ecto 
I guess they're calling Ecto-7. Ghostbusters. Looks like they incorporated the Galileo with, uh, this is Star Wars. Oh, the, the Emperor shuttles, I guess. Uh, right here. We have 18. The theme song for the series is floating around in my head. Uh, this looks like he was converting an eagle and he's crossing the streams here. This is Space 1999 Eagle, but he also incorporated a U.S. Enterprise into it, the shuttle. This is cool. Bizarre, but cool. Another sh um, Star Wars shuttle with a Galileo inserted in the middle. I've seen a couple other ones. This is cool. This isn't finished, but this is the um, APC from Aliens. Again, start out with a Galileo. Like the point is, you start out with a Galileo, and you can see whatever you could come up with. I'm not sure what this is from. Cute in the back. Uh, space balls. That's what I was thinking of this from Space Balls. Um, NASA, theme Galileo. All black with the yellow NASA and ins insignia. Insignia. Designation. He's dealing with Space 1999. But he has a Galileo incorporated. This is really original. I kind of like this concept. Uh, I know the guy who did this uh, called Black Beer Black, who's from Canada, really, really talented modeler. So he loves the uh, the colors of the, um, what was it, the, uh, I can't think of it. It was the Lamaze. It was the um, Ford GT40, I think. But he's taken, he loves those color schemes. I love this. This is the Thunderbirds from uh, Thunderbirds, Thunderbirds 4, from Thunderbirds movie or TV series. Space Shuttle from, I think this is from um, Battlestar Galactica, Galileo. And again, Galileo, another Space Shuttle, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> this is, um, looks like Gilligan's Isle, Space Shuttle. Hey, how about we do, okay, this is uh, the, um, Herbie, what was it, um, no, it's not going to help me out here, um, the love boat, uh, not the love boat, the beetle, I forget the name of it, it was Herbie. That's it. Another one, he actually lit this up, which is nice. There you go, let's incorporate it with another Star Wars. This is with the TIE, Sep tie Interceptor. Um, and I'm not sure what this is from. Cool though. Really futuristic. There's some weapons in the back. Not related to what I was just showing you. Let's go around. I don't have that. I don't have Excuse me. Well, this is kind of impressive. It's the beginning of an ad app. This actually, this piece right here blew me away. It's this, I guess it's the Sand Walker. Um, actually, let's do this first. But if you look inside here, this is like the Jawas. Let's see if I get it focused. Come on, you can do it. There we go. It's from the first Star Wars movie. Yeah, it's not focusing in the background. Okay, <laughs> back. So this is what the whole thing looks like. That is awesome. And if we go down, you can see even the second level of construction of maintenance going on. This is the top of it. See how I can 
see it, but this is kind of cool. This is the front of the sucker. And they're capturing a C-3PO, R2-D2. This is inside of it. Really detailed. I love also this, the lighting. Like you can light this stuff up sometimes, but if you don't have the lighting correct, it's not gonna look the right way. How you doing? How are you? Good. This is cool. Ooh, battle damaged TIE fighter. Oh, this is probably an asteroid field chase. This is the second Star Wars. Speaking of asteroids, this is cool collection of different lightsabers. I'm thinking. It's like the open shell of a, the transport. Rebels escape for, from. Okay, yeah, oh, these are stunt lightsabers, it looks like. This is another scene from Star Wars. <laughs> Empire Strikes, Strikes Back. Hoth, Echo Base, Planetary Defense. Not sure what this is. This is cool. Blade Runner, 80s refinery landscape. Creepy. Okay, this is evidently from the Ewoks, Star Wars Ewoks movie. The animation. You have a craft and you have another. This looks like it's Star Trek. And this is the other side of the Machine Krieger of the um, 60s. 60s Japanese science fiction model invasion. That's the big. This big monster destroyed is from behind. Let me get down here. The guy whose voice you hear in the background is Mike Heaton, the guy who did all of these things, most of these things. Very talented modeler. He actually he's, he's doing um, commission pieces for famous places like Disney. But he also does some stuff for himself. Ah! Can you introduce yourself? My name is Mike Salzo, and this is my nightmare. Mod <laughs> Modeler extraordinaire, you gotta add that to Thank it. Thank you very much. Great. I was telling, I'm videotaping this for a I website. Yeah. I was telling that years ago, uh, Jersey Fest, you actually sold me that destroyed monster. Okay. So. Still waiting to see you finish it. Yeah, I know you are. are you, is Jersey Fest taking place this year? Last I heard, I, uh, the rumors are no. Uh -huh. Last year it was Giovanni, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he felt like he was in over his head a little bit okay. or something. And Rob, don't video that one. Uh, okay. <laughs> Well, and then Rob wanted to start doing it again, but I don't know if he's in Florida for now. Or okay. Well, yeah. Well, I'm going to sign off from this. Let me pan around first the room again. Again, this is the smaller of the vending rooms. I'm over on the right hand side. The crowds are down. I might head over to the contest room. I haven't been over there yet. Uh, so this is Tony Woodson signing off.